so this is the, uh, the A1 primary shapes. This was done uh, uh, very well. Uh, some of the minor things that I saw uh, that was incorrect, uh, capital letters. So always, always, always use capital letters in, in, uh, in graphics or in drafting. Okay, so capital letters not only in the, uh, when you're typing, but uh, capital letters if you're having to print as well in the title block where the case is. Okay, so always, always, always capital letters. Also neatness, especially with your assignments, take the time to make sure that your, uh, your capitals are, uh, are neat. Okay, your, letters are, uh, your lettering is neat. Rectangular prism, cylinder. That's just, uh, don't put, uh, circles are not 3D uh, uh, shapes. They're not, uh, uh, I guess they are shapes, but they're not three-dimensional uh, uh, objects. So as opposed to a circle, you want to put cylinder there as opposed to a rectangle, re rectangular prism, okay? Uh, scale, this is actually really important. Uh, do I have it on here? Uh, can, can you see it there? Yeah, it's not, on yours it will be here. So uh, right beside your title block, there'll be a scale. Okay, this is the, this one's correct. It's it's one to two. It should be one to two. S there's ways of m messing up your scale so that what the scale that you see on your actual uh, um, projection is not the scale that's shown here. I think some people have one to five on it. Okay, if you have one to five, come and see me or come and see Mr. Sagan, and we'll show you how to fix that. Okay, but basically the only way that you should be changing your scale is by right clicking. Uh, on this surface uh, on your computer screen uh, and then going down to properties and changing your scale through that. I'll, I'll show you if you have any questions about it, but make sure you're very comfortable on doing that, okay? Because you don't want a, a disconnect between what the image is actually showing and what is actually in print. Okay, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, thickness. Make sure that uh, uh, you basically, what you're saying here is actually what you're showing here. So when it says thick, that's where you should be using your 0.9 millimeter pencil. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's not only thick, but dark. Okay, so th thick equals dark. So this is what I'm talking about. So you want to make sure it's thick and dark. When it says thin, you want to make sure it's thin and also light. Okay, and that's, so this is using your uh, 0.9 millimeter pencil. This is your, using your 0.5 millimeter pencil. So basically equate thick with uh, thick and uh, dark, thin and uh, light. Okay, and the obvious reason for that is because it allows us to quickly look at the, your drawing and quickly identify which lines are thick and which lines are thin. It just gives us one more uh, added uh, um, ability. Okay, uh, and again, uh, uh, this was very well done. Uh, everybody got the basic concept, which is uh, uh, really important because obviously lines, as we talked about, have uh, uh, meaning. Have a quick re re uh, read of those, and we're going to uh, take these up together here. Okay, so James, I'm going to bug you to start off with. Uh, what are the three principal views in a multi-view? Top, front, right. Right, okay. Uh, Chris, does it have to be right, or can it be a left? Uh, I think it's left. And why would you choose a left versus a right, or a right versus, right versus a left? Is it um, whichever one has the most uh, solid lines? Yep, the most uh, features, perfect. Okay, and uh, I already got your name and I've forgotten it again. Frank, uh, tell me uh, what factors should be considered when selecting the, uh, the front view of a multi-view drawing? Uh, whatever would give you the most detail. Perfect. So whatever view has the most detail on it, or another way of thinking about it. And uh, uh, David? For this one. So uh, what Frank said is that we, it, you want to maximize the amount of detail on that front face. What's another way of thinking about that? Uh, you want to minimize what? Minimize the lines. Okay. What are the three possible meanings of a, a solid line? And I'm going to bug uh, uh, Matthew. Um, one of them would just be the edge of the, uh, the object, whereas another one could be. Uh, uh, with two, uh, two planes each other. Yep, perfect. So two, and remember, the key was there, it has to be two planes and they have to form an edge or an abrupt uh, change in the planes. If, it's a, if we have a smooth curved, uh, that's not going to happen. Okay, and 
Uh, it's not Colton, is it? For, uh, Kyle. Yeah. Uh, just the individual lines. Yeah. What's uh, so we got two there. It defines a plane. Defines the intersection of two planes. What's another one? I kind of alluded to it. Remember the the block that we had before? Can't remember. Uh, curved surface. So you have a, you got a curved plane. It shows the, uh, it delineates the, the curved surface. Okay. Colton, right? Yeah, Colton, what are the precedent of the, uh, the following lines? So tell me which, which is the one you're always going to see no matter what. Solid. And then next? Hidden. Hidden line. And the, the final one? Set on. Okay. Everybody good with that stuff? Excellent. Okay, so today, as I promised, we're going to carry on with the multi views or orthogonal projections. Um, do you remember why? Orthogonal projections were so important. Why are we spending two weeks on it vice uh, one week that we're going to spend oblique and one week uh, that we're going to do an isometric? What's so important about uh, orthogonal projections? And Davis. It shows three different pictures of the same shape from all different sides. Yeah. And what can we do on each of those, uh, any, on each of those uh, uh, projections? The front, uh, the top, and the, and the side. What can we put on them? Anybody? James, perfect. Dimensions. Uh, so that's why uh, orthogonal projections are so critical, is because we can actually add dimensions to those projections. Because we, certain size or certain uh, views will have uh, a true size and true shape. And we're going to look at that in a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay, can everybody picture that uh, shape? So we have a, a quick sketch of a top or a front view, a top view, and a side view. Okay, what I've done is I've uh, shaded in uh, a certain uh, plane. So basically, what you're seeing there is basically uh, the best view to probably visualize it is, is this side. So it's basically a, it's an L, it's a, an L shape, a three dimensional L. So we have this plane here in our, uh, our front view. Now, if I label that plane, let's call it 1, 2, 3, 4, this plane has to appear in the top view, and it also has to appear in uh, the right-hand side view. Okay? That's just, it, it always has to appear somewhere. Okay, so if I label this 1, 2, 3, 4, where does 1, 2, 3, 4 exist in the, uh, in the top view? So Joe, what I want you to do is I want you to show me where 1, 2, 3, 4 exist on uh, uh, this view. And Ryan, I want you to show me where 1, 2, 3, 4 exists on the top view. Okay, And just uh, label it. You get the big blue chalk. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. So you see what Joe and Ryan did? Basically, we have this plane in the front view. This plane is represented by this line in the top view and is represented by this line in uh, the side view. What you also notice, which is kind of uh, this part here, is that there has to be alignment between the, the front face and the top face. So what we can draw is construction lines. So that helps us ensure that this feature, this plane, is aligned in not only the uh, front view, or front view and the top view, but also the, the side view. So one, two, three, four are aligned with one, two, or one, two, three, four in the in side view. So all features need to be aligned. Okay. Do you remember how we how do we align the views in the top and the side views? What do we use? What's the special feature that we use? Miter line. Okay, so the way we take a miter line is we extend the basic uh, uh, the basic uh, dimensions of uh, the top view and the basic dimensions of the side view, and where those two intersect, we can draw our miter line. Now, what we can do is we can take this feature here. It will be reflected 
down like that. It's probably, I probably should run a little more of this. Okay, so that's basically alignment. There has to be alignment between the features in the front and the top, the front and the side, and the, uh, the top and the side. Okay, everybody clear with that? Okay, that only, only applies to the, uh, the parts, but also the, any center lines or, uh, uh, or anything else like that. They have to be reflected uh, in there. So you, basically, when you have a plane, you should always see one, two, three, four in all the, uh, all the views. If you miss it, all of a sudden one of those numbers disappears, you've got a problem. And when we do the homework, this is a little trick that you can, uh, that you can use. OK, we basically already uh, discussed this. A, a feature such as a plane must appear in all views. It may appear as an edge in one or, or two views. So I'm not going to uh, beat that to a dead horse. We talked about planes here. There's basic, there, are, there are three basic planes when you're talking about orthogonal views. A through H, I want you to identify each of those planes based upon uh, those definitions. Okay, so where you go. So write down A through H, and then beside each, uh, between, beside each of those letters, you want to put, either put normal plane, inclined plane, or oblique plane. Uh, I want you to show me uh, show me two uh, normal planes okay. and, and explain why they're normal planes. Uh, I think H is a normal plane. Why? Parallel or all the surface is normal. Yeah. And you align them. Uh, so in, so we need uh, I need to be able to see one pl plane in true size and true shape. So show me H in true size and true shape. Which uh, which view the front, top, uh, or right? Front. Perfect. And where do I see it? I need mean, I two lines in the other views. So where do I see H as a line? Uh, H is a line in uh, this top. Perfect. And in the side. Uh, right there. Perfect. Okay. One more. And uh, F. Yeah. So you should. Can also see so that there is there is lines and where is it true size and true shape is a plane. Uh, true size and shape. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sharon. Okay, everybody get that. So, <laughs> so with a, a, a normal uh, ink or a normal plane, you always expect to see one plane in true size and true shape. In one view, the plane will be at one true uh, one. It will be a true size and true shape, and the other. Um, views, so F we have here and here, it will always appear as a line. Okay, and again, this is, a, so basically what we've done here, if you remember your box, remember our, uh, our box that we created around the object? So what you've done here is you've put your projection plane so it's normal with F. Okay, so, uh, so now it appears, uh, uh, with the right side, uh, it's normal uh, with, uh, with F. And that, because of that, we get a true size and true, true shape uh, plane, which is uh, F right there. And it appears as a line in these other two views. Two. Two. Okay. Any questions about a normal plane? Okay. And the, the reason that, uh, the whole reason that we have orthogonal projection, the reason we like it again, is now I can take, I can actually add dimensions to F, and I know that those are going to be true size and true shape, and it will make it easier for me, for the reader to understand what I want them to do. Okay, Brett, you're next. Okay, I think uh, 
Show me, I think there is only one. So show me uh, your uh, uh, inclined plane and explain to me why. Um, I'm going to say C is inclined. Okay, so, uh, so we, we, I need to see uh, two distorted surface and one edge. Uh, there's, like, there's the one edge on the face. Yep, there's the edge. Two distorted surfaces. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay, so if I wanted to actually dimension this length, I could use that line right there. Otherwise, this distance here is actually this distance from there uh, to there. Oh, sorry, uh, that distance from uh, there to there. Well, that makes sense. And that height is from there to there. It's not actually from there to there. Okay, so that's why it's distorted. Does everybody get that? No vacant space? Good. Okay. Mao, you got you have the oblique. So, B? Because there's three distorted faces and like all three planes. Perfect. Excellent. So when you're doing your homework tonight, or night or this week sometime, think it'll help you visualize, think that uh, in your head uh, what type of views or what type of uh, planes you're dealing with. Okay, because if you can if you can see, for example, you can see B in three different views, well you know that it's an oblique and that gives you an idea of what it looks like. If it's uh, a line and two distorted planes, well then you know it's an inclined plane, you have an idea of what, uh, what it looks like. And it, obviously if it's uh, uh, a normal one, you're going to expect a, a true size and true shape in one view and then two lines in another. So one of the tactics that you can use is not only by numbering, which we saw earlier in helping your visualization, but also just lettering. So you could letter your, uh, your views or uh, your planes. So the F uh, F, 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 and F. So they all have to correspond. Okay, and that will allow you to help you uh, visualize what uh, uh, what object you're looking at. Okay, have a quick read of that. Okay, so this is, um, you've seen a tr common thread, I keep going back to it. Basically, your, a lot, your homework will be a lot on visualization. So these are the steps or some of the tools that you can uh, uh, use. So obviously, you want to think to yourself, uh, what does a hole look like? Uh, uh, what does a slot look like? And if you can picture what the hole in the slot looks like, it's going to make uh, things a lot easier. Realize what uh, uh, your planes, we already talked about uh, uh, that. We already talked about uh, alignment and configuration. Uh, meaning that uh, uh, that's with the numbering, so one, two, three, four. If you see one, two, three, four in, in the front view, you'd expect one, two, three, four in the top view and also in the, in the side view. So that's basically what this is, uh, uh, is saying. Also, we talked about the, the blocking in the features. That helps uh, uh, um, so draw the basic width and uh, depth and height of your, uh, your object, and that will also help you fill in the, the gaps where everything, uh, everything goes. The homework will help with us. It's, uh, yeah, the homework's challenging. <laughs> okay, one of the things you're going to be doing for your homework is uh, this, which is uh, uh, complete uh, the third uh, uh, view. So with this basically, uh, I'll have you read that for two seconds, and then we'll actually do an example. It's probably easier than me talking about it. So one of the key points is this, solutions are not necessarily unique. So uh, there are multiple solutions for most, uh, uh, most of the work. The, one I'm gonna, the example I'll show you has three solutions that I know of and the one, the homework has a, a bunch too. Okay. okay, so take out a bit of spare paper and uh, see if you can figure out um, what the side view is. So you have your, uh, your front view here, your top view here. What I want you to do is draw in a possible side view, the right hand, uh, right -hand side.
Everybody good with that one? That's probably the, the, one, the most common one that people uh, find. Have you got another one, Ryan, or no? If not, that's okay. Is it, can anybody, did anybody come up with another one? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to remember your name. Don't, don't tell me. I'm going to cheat. Joe. Yeah. Come on up. Perfect. Anybody else have another, another one? Hmm. Now you're going to make me think. <laughs> Has everybody got a problem with it? If you put it on the front, there's going to be a hidden line on the top, like halfway in between the solid line and the mm -hmm. solid line, yeah. so you can't do that. Where's going to be the hidden line? Come up here and show, uh, show us. Good try. This is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, the hidden lines is what kill you. Yeah, you we want to rotate this to this view. Yeah. This would then be there. It would be from this line here, there would be a hidden line. line. Perfect. Right yeah. Everybody see that? There's, a, there's one more that's fairly common that people usually come up with. Just two squares? Yeah. Two squares? Come up there, James, and go, go for it. And uh, Jacob? You wanna, do you have another one? Uh, let's see. OK, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that one would work, but the problem with that one is it's kind of, it's not really attached. If you, uh, that one would work, yeah, but the problem is it's not attached. Yeah. Technically, yes. Yeah. That's a good try, uh, good try, yeah. Yeah, but it would. Uh, what I would have done is probably shown it. I would have dropped memory I had that option. But it, that, if 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 I put that across there, yeah, it would work. Yeah, that's a good try. Cool. Any other ones? There is one more. I'll... That's another uh, option of uh, one you can use. Okay. Cool. So you can see the uh, good thinking. That, uh, I was impressed with uh, the creativity. So you can see that there's many different uh, solutions uh, uh, to the homework uh, or to this uh, simple uh, uh, complete the third view exercise. So if you go into your student package, this is what you're going to be completing uh, uh, this week. There's two sketches that are uh, due for next week. This is one of them. So you have a uh, a top view, you have a front view, and what you have to do is uh, create uh, the, uh, the side view. And again, there's uh, numerous different uh, solutions to it. Um, what I would suggest doing, this can be a little challenging, so what I would recommend doing is uh, try it yourself, and then get together with a couple friends and see if you can uh, uh, work together to see if you can get the right answer, because there's a couple little minor things that most people get wrong. So if you work together as a group, uh, that will help you uh, 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 remove those uh, uh, problem errors. So, but try uh, yourself first, and then go from there. Okay. So there's that one, and the other homework is this one. It's uh, A3 uh, missing lines. So what you have to do each there's it's a one, two, three, four. There's twelve uh, uh, blocks. They're all different blocks, and what is it? you have to basically insert a line, a hidden line or a, a solid line, or, uh, or lines. It could be one, two, or three lines, and they could be hidden or solid in each of these, uh, these drawings in order to make sure that it's correct. Because right now, these, uh, these drawings are not correct. Okay, so the front view, the top view, and the side view do not all match up. So you have to insert a line in there to make it work. So what people frequently do is you tr try to visualize what the object looks like, and then try to figure out where the error is and make the correction by adding a, a line. This can be very frustrating and, uh, um, uh, yeah. This is how I would recommend uh, attacking this. So 
the whole point of this process is to get you visualized and to, so that you, it helps you visualize. And same with uh, this. So I don't want you to spend in, uh, you could spend, when I did this myself, it probably took me about a week. And that's uh, what I did is I put it on my board and I do a little bit of work and I look back up and I try a couple. So it can be really, uh, really challenging. What I would try is I would try by yourself, I would try them all, okay? And, and see if you can visualize uh, all, the, all the blocks. Then what I would do is I would grab a couple friends and I would do the same thing, try to work together to try to visualize uh, uh, the blocks. Then, as a last resort, or as a, uh, finally, after you've, you've done all those steps, then I, what I have in the, uh, in the lab is a box. It's on the, by the printers. It has all the 3D models. So, uh, we use the 3D printer in order to make all these parts. Okay, and that box will stay in that lab uh, uh, until next week. Okay, so after you've tried it, by yourself, after you tried it with some friends, then go back and go into the lab and actually look at the blocks. Okay, and that will help you uh, visualize the, uh, uh, the part. Okay, so the, the, the whole goal of this assignment is to help you practice uh, visualization. I don't really care if you get it right or wrong, or I do care, but what I really care about is that you get the practice uh, doing the visualization. Okay, so number one, try it yourself, then try it with some friends, try to work together, and then uh, go, come into the lab and actually see the parts and see, and then uh, the complete the assignment. That will help you uh, uh, really put together what the projection is showing and what the, the visualization is. Okay, everybody clear on that? Okay, and, those, and please, please, please keep the box in the, in the lab, because that way if uh, your friends come back later on, uh, they know where to find it. Don't take the blocks uh, out of the, of the lab. Does anybody know the difference between the around? Uh, is it Doug? Yep. Doug, come on up here and show us. Basically be like, a, uh, not necessarily a 90 degree edge, but a uh, fillet would be like cutting inwards into a shape with like a straight or a planed edge kind of thing, whereas a rounding would be rounding an edge to a certain radius. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So you've actually there's three things that you're going to see on here. There's a chamfer, a fillet, and, uh, and some rounds. Okay, so uh, uh, as Doug indicated, a round basically is where you've got two objects or two surfaces and they come together at a 90 degree angle. Can you see a problem with the, uh, the, uh, that issue from a safety standpoint? Sharp, it's just, uh, it's just sharp, especially if it's, mil uh, if it's metal or whatever the case is. So what you simply do is you take uh, uh, that edge and uh, Colton, can I get you to hold those pages? What you do is you basically take, you cut a curve along there to a given, uh, given radius, as, as Doug indicated. Okay, so that's basically what you see here. So we see around here, all along here. Uh, where else do we see around? And there's probably around on the, uh, on the underside as well. Around that goes up into the cylinder that's the cylinder is part. This here? Is that around? That's not around. That's, a, that's the opposite. That's a fillet. Okay, so you can, you can see, so a fillet, if you want to think about it, is a, a exterior, uh, a fillet is I interior. So, and that's basically what you got here. What you have is a, uh, the cylinder interfacing with uh, this, uh, um, this object, a this three-dimensional object. And what you've created is you've created a, a, a fillet. Concave, convex. Convex, concave, concave, if you want to think about it that way. Yep. Okay. Is everybody clear on the, the difference between those two? And basically, the way you... Uh, um, uh, identify the, uh, uh, what type of uh, round or fillet you have is by a radius. Okay, so this round will have a certain radius and this uh, uh, fillet will have a uh, uh, radius. And it, it's very, very common in machining. Number one, it looks nicer, it, uh, it has a better flow to it, and also from a safety uh, standpoint as well, the, uh, they're useful. So we have our round, we have our fillet, we have one other object on here, chamfer. Okay, anybody know where the chamfer is? Uh, Ryan? Is it Ryan? Joe. It's uh, around the, the edge of the, the hole up top there. Perfect. Cool. So that's our, uh, that's our chamfer. Okay, so a chamfer is basically, uh, um, Colton, I can get you to do this again. So we've got our object here. We've got a 90 degree angle. Oops. <laughs> and you basically just slice it here. Okay, so it's just basically taking an uh, inclined plane and slice it enough. And that's, uh, thanks. And that's what you get here. So that is our, uh, uh, our chamfer. Okay, so we'll be using those quite a bit uh, uh, over the next uh, couple weeks. Okay, going back to this, um, so shape caused by eliminating sharp corners and in, uh, in casting indicated with a general note on the drawing. So as opposed to if we wanted to uh, uh, add dimensions to this, you could add dimensions to each of, the, each of these fillets and rounds. The most common way to do it 
is to simply put uh, all fillets and rounds are two. So that means that all fillets and rounds have a radius of, uh, of two. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And we'll look at this in a second. It's better drawn with a... So there's the part as a model, a three-dimensional model. That's what it looks like as an orthogonal projection. Okay. So number one, what you can see is that we said there was a round all along here. So there's the round all along here. You'll notice that you don't see the intersection of where that flat surface goes with the, the vertical surface. And why is that? Why don't we show a line there? It's not an abrupt intersection of two planes. It's a nice smooth intersection. because that, That's the whole point. That's why we, we have a round. Okay, so that's why we don't show it. it uh, there is a feature, and I'm, it's escaping me the name of it, in SolidWorks. Sometimes we get you to put that on to show that, but most of the time we don't. Can you think of a reason why we put it, we put it on? We, you, this is correct. You'd never, unless we tell you otherwise, you don't want to show it. Why would be an instance why you would want to show, show that actual uh, uh, that line to show that uh, um, uh, that uh, curve or that round? Can you think of a reason? Just simple visualization. Sometimes uh, it makes it easier for you to visualize if you if you put it. It's incorrect uh, technically, but uh, some, sometimes you can put it on. Uh, but uh, for technical purposes, uh, leave it off. Okay. Uh, what else can we see? Here you're seeing your, uh, that's your chamfer that we saw. So there's a the chamfer. And you're seeing the fillet here because we're looking uh, 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 basically this way at it. So you're basically, if you're looking, if I was here, looking this way, then I would see the actual uh, fillet there. That's the only time that you uh, draw them. Okay, any questions about it? 